Um, this is one of one of the engines that uh, were acquired from Hill Air Force Base as uh, surplus equipment. It is a 44-ton uh, GE switcher, manufactured in 1953. Uh, came here a number of years ago. It uh, spent uh, sorry, it spent some time uh, on lease to the Utah Central Railroad, where they uh, painted their logo on it and so forth and uh, then came back here and set static in the display area for probably 12 to 15 years without being run and we're in the process of getting it going again so uh, lots of small things have deteriorated over the years and uh, we're in the process of just going through step by step and fixing each one as we uh, get there so at this point we have engine two which is the engine here running uh, seems to be doing just fine go from there, one step at a time. The types of things that we've run into, for instance, uh, we could get engine two to start, but we didn't have any control of the throttle. Uh, we found out that the throttle linkage was uh, mechanically broken, and so that had to be replaced. Uh, we scavenged some parts off of a similar engine in the collection, and uh, last week we, we ended up getting that uh, completed. Uh, one of the Simple but uh, uh, tedious jobs was uh, the diesel fuel was 15 years old sitting in the tanks and not, not having been used so it was very very contaminated with water and sediment and other things so we had to completely drain the diesel fuel uh, and start with, with fresh fuel. Uh, the other thing was batteries uh, have been sitting around for a long time. Uh, the original batteries were gone and we had, had to uh, move some batteries from one of the other pieces of equipment into this one to uh, to get it going. So it's, it's a whole series of, of small things and, and we're going, you know, as I said before, step by step, uh, eliminating each thing uh, as, as we go along. Um, engine one, we can get to to run if we're using starting ether with it. Uh, as soon as we take the starting ether away, it dies. Um, so we've, we've got to the point where we diagnosed the fact that it uh, it is not getting fuel. And uh, this week, one of the tasks is to figure out why. So uh, hopefully, we'll have some success, and we'll have two engines running this week. We're we're going through the diagnostic diagnostics at this point. Um, you know, one of the uh, Interesting, thing, interesting events is that we uh, we located uh, a person from the Utah Central Railroad who used to operate the engine, and uh, he joined us for the first time last week and diagnosed, helped us with some of the diagnosis. And what we believe at this point is the governor is sticking in engine number one, and so we have to dismantle that and inspect it and see if, uh, in fact, that that is the problem. So, um, you know, at this point we can't say exactly what's wrong. Uh, what we have determined so far is that most of the major components are just fine. They just haven't been used for a while. And so it needs to um, be exercised, it needs to be lubricated, uh, all the normal maintenance type things, uh, but nothing catastrophically wrong. Uh, the main concern right now is getting engine number one running and we're in the middle of diagnosing that.